Hello and welcome to Witness, I'm Raggy Omar. For many children, some of their most precious moments are the quiet time spent with their mother or father reading a bedtime story, listening to tales of fantasy and magic together to send them off to their dreams. But for thousands of children, the real dream is spending any time with their parents at all. Today, in the United States, there are approximately 2.3 million people incarcerated, and around two out of every hundred children in the U.S. have at least one parent behind bars. This long-term separation creates a lifelong emotional chasm for both parents and child. In their moving film, Once Upon a Time, directors Michael Graziano and Ernie Park show us an extraordinary project that helps span this gap, bringing imprisoned parents and their children together through the magic of storytelling. Shark Tech and I won. You did? Uh-huh. Mommy, I know how to read. How many types? I have six books. Six different books? Yes. Should I get just two, one tape per book or for the same book? Thank you. Hey, Tessie, this is Mommy. And um, like always, I'm sending you a book. I hope you like it. And I hope you read it along with me every time before you go to bed. The name of the book is The Story of Martin Luther King Jr. Jean, this is Mom. And you all God's creatures go to heaven. in heaven with lots of other children, angels from all over the world. Jacob loves heaven and he loves... The first World Series was played in 1903. African League, AL was the only two years old game. The rabbit. But most of all, he was on... Prison and jail officials just are leery about people bringing in recording equipment. And I didn't think that... I, I didn't know if we'd be able to overcome that. Well, storybooks started uh, with Jana Minor and her sisters who received $40,000 from an aunt who had never married, who was a teacher in a one-room schoolhouse. And Jana and her sisters had been involved with prison ministry through their churches, through correspondence projects. And she wanted to do something that would make a difference in terms of getting people in touch with their kids. And she and some other folks, uh, Sister Pat Davis from Lutheran Social Services, all of them sort of figured out what's the best thing we can do to help moms stay in touch. And they came up with this idea of a storybook, which was a very simple, elegant gesture to help kids hear their mom's voices, but also encourage children to read. Hi, Deontay. This is Mommy. I miss you so much and I love you so much. I decided to read a book with you. Since we don't have time to usually talk and play and read when you come visit me, let's read a book together. I wish people could understand that um, nobody is all good and nobody is all bad. 
you know, somebody once said, nobody is as bad as the worst thing they did or as good as the best thing. And, and we can't write people off. They sentenced me to 28 years. And I served three years at the Cook County Correctional Center, so I have to do 25 more here. I was in gangs. I was involved in gangs. I have 35 years. I'm not eligible for parole. I'm in kindergarten now. I like to play on my horse. And I love to color and play with my stuffed animal monkey. So I had my daughter in jail. I wasn't allowed to spend much time with her after she was born. Two days with her at the hospital, and then I had to give her up. I thought my life was over. I said, what's the point of living if I have to spend this much time in jail? Excuse me. Oh, just they smile, they laughter, them climbing in the bed with me. Them just, we just singing together and talking together. <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, they, they, I was, they was young when I got here. Actually, I don't know what being a mom is. I know what giving birth to a child is, but I have no idea what being a mom is. I think one of the most important things that we can do is let the parents know that there are ways that they can parent from prison. And one of them is to encourage the children to go to school and to remain literate, to remain focused on their studies. Because we know that when children are read to, they do better in school. And we want the kids to know that their moms care about them and to help the book remind them of the emotional tie. We hear all kinds of anecdotal information about what the tape or the book means. And it takes on a life of its own. It's not so much the book or the tape, but it's, it's mama. It's a relationship that they're being reminded of that they have. So it's agency for the mom to make a decision and parent. It's emotional bonding for the mother and child. And it's literacy for the family. Those are the three goals that we have in this project. There is no reason to be alone. I will call Rip. Remember to talk, Rip, and make it sound like you're talking. I am sad to be all alone. Remember the story you had nobody to play with? I am sad to be all alone, Rip. Said Tell, come over. Sorry, said Tell. I am Take me back to my bed. Fine to have friends. It is, isn't it? Yes. Oh my did you isn't he a good I'm, I'm so proud of him. He's such I'm a good so reader. Proud. He's really, really using all those strategies and he's becoming fluent with his reading. I love my sister. I am so grateful for her. Because if it wasn't for her, my kids would probably be in the system or somewhere. Put your seatbelt on. When they ask how long my mom is going to be gone, I would tell them, just give her a little time. You know, let's just figure out everything. And uh, Deontay is, is, is older, so he, he more has a little bit of, uh, of an understanding about it. It's counsel that he just follows what Deontay says. So it, it really, that's how they, they are. Um, he all, it was always him and Deontay. So they they have an understanding as to mom may not be here for a while maybe when they're teenagers when she comes home just acknowledge the fact that she's there you have a lot of kids out here that don't have mothers or their mothers don't care for them well some kids seem to be okay um, depending on their placements economically these kids that are uh, 
you know, sort of left behind by their parents who would go off to prison, are burdened sometimes to other family members. Uh, some of them do go into foster care. Some of them just simply, the grandmothers have no resources to take care of them. They're very limited in terms of their supervision of these kids when they get out of school. So these kids are sometimes out there on the streets. They're very likely them, themselves to be incarcerated, children of in, incarcerated folks. So that's a really tough, tough situation um, for those kids as well. It's my greatest concern for her. That she'll think that I don't love her or that I didn't love her at the time when this happened because I didn't think about her. Sorry for not being there in their lives. Excuse me. I'm sorry for not being there in their lives as they growing up and for them to continue to keep their head up and to continue to do right in life and that everybody makes mistakes and I hope that they don't never not love me and hold anything against me where they cannot love me. A blue dog on a red tree. A red dog on a blue tree. A green dog on a yellow tree. Some dogs, some big dogs, and some little dogs going around in cars. Join me after the break to see just what spending a lifetime in prison means to the children left behind. Music